Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Hey, everyone. We are here for another episode of Doing Life with Ken and Ken Tabitha. Ken and Tabitha. We're pumped to have you guys here. If you're newer to our program, welcome. Um, we call it Doing Life with Ken and Tabitha because we're building a huge online family where we can just add some value to your life, hopefully help you grow closer to God and to the people that you love in your life. If you enjoy today, make sure that you subscribe. Also, make sure that you share this content, download the podcast, and be ready because every Tuesday and Thursday we come in. And so anyway, we got some things I love. to. We want to talk today about enjoying everyday life. Everyday life. What comes to your mind with that title? Ooh, everyday life. I mean, well, with the title, it makes me happy uh -huh. um, because I do, I would like to enjoy everyday life. And I will admit uh -huh. that there are some moments in my life every day that oof, yeah. I didn't choose joy. Like as a mother, mm -hmm. and as a businesswoman, yes. as a leader in ministry. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of grunt work. Yes. And I think sometimes we, um, uh, it's what I call the, the routine. So when we say everyday life, we're talking about routine every day. We can actually enjoy those mm -hmm. things. We don't have to just, just kind of grunt through them. Yeah. Work, just yeah. Kinda just kind of push through. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, what I found out is that um, most of our life isn't lived on the mountaintop. Mm -hmm. Okay. We might have 10 mountaintop experiences. What I mean by that is uh, we got married. Mm -hmm. We had a baby. Yeah. We got a job. We got a promotion at the job. Uh huh. What else is a mountaintop experience? Um, you, you said get married, mm -hmm. uh, birthdays, okay. uh, vacations. Vacation is huge. I'm in Dubai. Um, I'm in Paris. Mm -hmm. Anniversaries. And so what I've, you know, I'm just throwing out a number. I believe we have 10 or so mountaintop experiences in life. Maybe it's 20. Who knows? All right. But our life isn't really lived on the mountaintop. Yeah. And thankfully, our, our life isn't lived in the valley. The valley is the dark season. Mm -hmm. So when I say valley, what comes to your mind? Ooh, uh, sickness. Yeah. The loss of a loved one. Right. Loss of a job. Loss of a job. Yeah. Um, bankruptcy, foreclosure. Mm -hmm. um, something that just didn't go our way. Yep. Thankfully, the majority of our lives isn't lived in the valley. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that the devil isn't playing fair and he wants to us to over focus on the valley seasons. And then I also know that there are some people who feels like they're stuck in a valley. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's chronic disease or yeah. they've had multiple things, but that's not the majority. Mm -hmm. um, the majority of us, 80 percent of our life is live what I call mid mountain. And that's a skier term. You know, mm -hmm. I love to snow ski. And uh, it's one thing to be on top of the mountain where the expert skiers are. It's another thing to be down in the valley at the lodge. But mid-mountain is where the majority of our lives li are lived, mm -hmm. which is the everyday routine, um, elementary things. It it's the washing the dishes. Mm. It's to the taking the kids to school, picking them up from school. It's vacuuming the house. It's doing laundry. And I really believe that God wants us to enjoy the mid-mountain everyday life stuff. Wow. You know, it seems like it's um, maybe the word impossible. Like, how do you enjoy even those moments, like taking out the trash, mm -hmm. ironing the clothes, um, parent-teacher conferences? Like, how do you enjoy all of those things? Um, well, for me, you got to know that God wants you to enjoy your life. So John 10, 10 says that the thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. And if you look at John 10, 10 in the Amplified, it says that Jesus came that we might have and enjoy life. Come on. Have and enjoy life. And there's a lot of people, they have life, but they're not enjoying it. They mm. have life. And actually, there are some Christian sections of people. You know how there's all kinds of different pockets and streams of Christianity. Some people almost believe if you're having fun, then you're being carnal. Mm. There's almost this tone. If you're like celebratory and having a party, then it's like fleshy or carnal. And I, I would submit that the Bible says the opposite, uh -huh. that Jesus came that we might not just have a life. Oh, yeah. And we understand there's going to be suffering. We understand that we're going to have to carry our cross. We understand there's going to be warfare, but I might as well do it with a smile on my Absolutely. face and joy in my heart. And I'll say, like, even I didn't grow up in church. I got saved when I was 22 years old. But when I did, and so we found a, a good church uh -huh. um, at two years later, two years after I got saved right. at 24. And we had been through to a few churches, but I wouldn't say where they were fun and life giving. It was just kind of, you go and you know, you worship God on Bring Sunday. On. Yeah. And then you like go back home and I wasn't taught to read your Bible or anything like that, but, and, but God bless the churches, you know, but when I started going to, you know, the church that we grew in, uh -huh. 
it it was that spirit of joy is what attracted me. Yeah. Like the pastor was telling jokes and having fun. And there was like, at the time they had this welcome song uh -huh. and it was just like, if you were like a first time guest, they'd be like, stand up, uh -huh. which was ho totally uncomfortable for me to stand up. But I stood up. Yeah. It was so fun because it was just like, oh, wow. They would do these... the wave in church. I they mean, did the, was, oh the oh my gosh, point, the, the wave. Point, and everybody would do the wave in the crowd. Yes. And it was actually where you wanted to go. Yeah. It's like I wanted to bring my friends to a church where they could experience the joy yeah. and the celebration. So it was like, it wasn't no like, I got to go to church. No, this is what I wanted to do. Right. And I, don't know, I just feel like uh, it, it should be like that all the time. It really should be like in every area of our life though. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, um, one of our, the people that I've loved listening to over the years is Joyce Meyer. Mm -hmm. And she's actually titled this as the name of her whole ministry. If you see her on TV or radio, enjoying everyday life. Uh -huh. She's probably in the top three of the podcast that I listen to still. And there has been things that she said that has really helped shape my perspective on this. And of course we, you know, want to shout out Joyce Meyer, but also want to give God all the glory for the revelation of what oh. it means to enjoy everyday life. Yes. Because for me, I've been a person in my life who have, have lived under a lot of dread. Mm. And I don't know if I got any dread heads that are listening or watching where I like dread going to a meeting, dread going to work, dread having a conversation with somebody, dread checking my email, dread checking the snail mail, just dread, dread, dread. Mm. And somehow God has helped me learn how to turn dread into delight Yeah, because that's a sad thing to have kids, but dread like, Oh my God, I'm gonna have to get up with the baby or dread. Like, Oh my God, I got to cook again and again mm -hmm. uh, or dread. Oh man, y'all just leave your clothes around. And I think there is something, and you can tell me as a wife and a mom, mm -hmm. what is it taking for you to, or do you still, do you struggle enjoying everyday life? Um, not as much as I used to. Uh -huh. Sometimes I struggle more than others, like in particular seasons, I struggle more than others where we, I don't know if I'm still in this season now. I feel like I might be coming to the end of it, mm -hmm. but just as a parent, um, I was struggling maybe, you know, like within this last month because I was allowing the children to frustrate me so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, you know, like I have, you know, we have three kids, a 17 year old, a 13 year old and an 11 year old year old two uh -huh. girls and a boy and our youngest is I mean he's just do, being a boy yeah. he's just living his life okay he's living his best life yeah. all right but he's not he's letting anything out of you, <laughs> yes oh. he's like the light of the party he's oh, not yeah. letting anything bring yeah. him down it's but all, me on the other hand right he's, he's pulling it all out of me he's just sucking the life yeah, out and of I me I realized this a couple weeks ago or a few weeks ago I'm not sure how, exactly how long it was almost your volume had went to a mm. level of great frustration like these kids mm. or this kid I don't know what it is mm. and I, I get thrown in there with the kids I'm an innocent bystander you just don't well me yeah there. I get mad at you yeah. just you know but they getting on my last nerve they Ooh. won't let me get a break and it's almost like really they're just being kids right and I don't know just talk about that how do you deal with that when because there's a lot of single people that they get married mm -hmm. but then marriage comes with all this responsibility oh yeah and you f feel like man i'm picking up after my kids but why i got to pick up after another grown person right and it's like well if that's your perspective well then you just taking care of your family mm. is going to be like a pain in the yeah. rear until you realize how to turn that into worship Talk exactly about that um, I think well, there, there's a few different answers I have to it. Sometimes there's just practical things that you can do to keep the joy in your life. Mm -hmm. Like, um, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, somebody did something. Oh, our, our, one of our children, right? She's really clumsy at this point. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm super clumsy. I would, she's just mini me, okay? First of all, she broke something earlier that day. Mm -hmm. Then turns around, like, tw and then she, like, almost hurt herself to the point, like, I heard her bone hit against the floor. And so I go over to her. I put my hands on her and I begin to pray for her. She laughs at me, but I was like, I'm serious. In the name of Jesus, I bless you. I thank you, Lord, for your angels that keep her in all of her ways. Like I'm declaring blessings over her. So my child is not accident prone and that she will be safe. Right. Like maybe 20 minutes later, mm -hmm. she's in the kitchen tossing a Christmas bulb right in the air and catching it. I didn't know it was a Christmas bulb that was glass. All of a sudden, I, fe I hear psh <laughs> everywhere. And it was just like, I felt little pieces of glass like water hitting my arms and legs. It the shattered same at the same day. day. I oh, 
I just couldn't even speak. Yeah. I, I couldn't well, even speak. This is the child that breaks everything. She has dropped my cell phone into the toilet, destroying my cell phone. She has broken how many she, times? She dropped she her cell her, her own cell phone. Her own cell phone. She has no cell phone. She she broke the laptop it, and then they laptop. took it and gave her an iPad. And then she broke the And iPad. she broke the iPad. And so she's just walking around the house. The other day she we were telling her to clean up something and she just took um her brother's <laughs> uh, shirt uh. and threw it up in the air and knocked off a glass um, piece of art that we had. I forgot. I she mean, just did just that. Psh, just destroying oh. stuff. And so, it's like you're like I'm, I'm sending these kids back to where they came from. So you know, in that moment, I was livid. Yeah. Okay, but I knew I knew she didn't mean it. Like I just live it like losing your joy, like losing my joy. Okay, and so I just went like this. I was just like, ha ha. I had to laugh. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> laugh and I went to Alexa and I said Alexa play Dietrich Haddon the joy of the Lord and it came on the joy of the Lord is my strength it's this old school song from back in the day you don't even know it back in the day okay youth ministry we used to listen to this song and I blasted it as loud as it can go she's in there sweeping everybody looking at me like what is mom about to do is she about to kill it <laughs> The child, you know, and I just put a, a worship song on. And by the end of the song, I was good. Uh -huh. Laughed. We, yeah. we swept and mopped and did it all. So yeah. one of the tool, tools is just to worship. Yeah. Laugh. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like literally. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Okay, I'm about to put on this worship song because I have no strength right now. I need help from God. Yeah. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Yeah. And so. And I think that foundation is important. So for mm -hmm. those of you all who do follow our ministry, um, we were doing a series at church called mm -hmm. Drip. And yeah, we talked about from Isaiah 61, where it talks about um, God will give us the oil of joy yes. instead of mourning. mourning. And right now, there's so much depression mm -hmm. and there's so much sadness and there's so much mourning. Mm -hmm. And I've learned that we grieve, but we don't grieve like those who have no yeah. hope. And we get sad, but we don't allow our sadness to control us for the joy of the Lord. And so what we've learned, and you can always jump over to the Alive Church page and check out. And we also did a message called Enjoying Everyday Life. That's yes. a great segment that kind of matches this. We wanted to unpack that a little mm -hmm. bit more. But what we found out is that the joy of the Lord is our strength. So if you ever feel weak or down, you need to fill up on the joy of the Lord. Read books about joy. Yeah. Hang around other joyful people. Read the scripture about joy. We found that the joy of the Lord is not circumstantial. It's not, hey, I'm going to be happy and joyful when everything is favorable and I get everything that I want. No, this joy you can have even if things aren't well. And yeah. it actually gives you strength. We found out that this is not just a, a, a natural joy. This is a spiritual joy that mm -hmm. comes from Jesus. And we are having a joy movement. And yeah. I hope the people that are listening will receive not just the teaching today, but the impartation of joy. Mm. Because I know you dealt with depression Absolutely. for 12 years and yep. you've been healed for 20 years mm -hmm. now. So there is an anointing of joy yes. that we can walk in. Anything come to your mind with that? Um, I think that, you know, when it comes to joy, you're talking about the joy of the Lord uh -huh. being your strength. Yeah. I think it's important for us as believers to understand, like you were talking about the mountaintops and the valleys yeah. that, um, you know, just because you're in the will of God and yeah. maybe doing what God said to do doesn't mean that it's always going to be like happy, yeah. like happy times, yeah. like feel good times, feel that good. there are times when you are going to not feel feel like it. Right. You're going to feel like I feel crazy right now. I don't want to take care of my family. I don't want to do my job. Uh -huh. God, are you sure you told me to do this because I'm doing it? And I thought that if you told me to do this, right. then I should be happy right now. But it's hard, yeah. God. You know what I mean? So I think it's important for us to understand that just because we're going through a hard situation or a hard time, yeah. um, that we can still have joy. Well, anything God's asked us to do has come with a level of it was hard. Yeah. It's not like God asked us to do something and then the devil has rolled over and said, OK, we're going to let you we're going to let you do that. Yeah. So when we moved from Washington, D.C., left our real estate business to start a church in Gainesville, Florida, that was hard. Yeah. When we grew the church, that was hard. Then we um, started an Orlando location and moved our family again. That was hard. Yes. Built the building that was hard. I guess the, the point is. It's just because it's hard doesn't mean you can't handle it. Right. We've actually been created and made for hard things. And the joy of the Lord is what's so needed. Right. Um, to help us get through hard things. And I just feel like people are sometimes looking for joy and happiness and pornography mm. and drugs mm -hmm. and alcohol or some illicit sexual 
um, activity online or just meeting people and stuff like that. And all of that stuff is short term. And it has a lot to do with infatuation and happy endorphins, but it's nothing supernatural that's going to last through the battle. Wow. We need the supernatural joy of the Lord. Absolutely. So I love this topic, enjoying everyday life, because when people think of joy um, and they think of like enjoying their life, they don't really think I'm going to have joy while washing the dishes or I'm going to have joy while giving my baby a bath. And there was a scripture that I shared with everybody. I don't know if you remember it. It was in First Corinthians chapter 1031 tell me what you think of this it says mm -hmm. so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do do it all for the glory of God Ooh. and so what it makes me think when it says do it all for the glory of God is that whatever I do I want to do it as unto the Lord and when I do it it can turn my everyday routine life into acts of worship mm. can you talk about that that yeah, I love that. I actually had to um, really think about that and got a revelation of that scripture yeah. early on when our kids were all babies, you know, like six, four, and you know, two. Uh -huh. And um, it, it was uh, I had to really just have a revelation mm -hmm. that waking up in the morning and changing dirty diapers and feeding children you know, X times a day, whenever you're nursing and things like that, um, putting dinner on the table, mm -hmm. just being there for my family mm -hmm. was um, as unto the Lord, yeah. that it would glorify God yeah. uh, by me just, you know, fulfilling these roles. That gave me a joy mm -hmm. um, in just... Well, that stuff ain't sexy. Yeah. And I think that many times when it comes to spiritual things, we feel like worship is just hands up, palms up, tears in our eyes on our knees. And we haven't really made our everyday life an act of worship. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an important transition to make. So wh when we think of worship, we think of fasting and praying in closet. Like, have I went into my closet? Have I, have I been with God? But when God gives you a family and God gives you uh, a spouse or when God gives you a business and a job, you can actually turn everything that you do has a, you can redeem all of that time and, and do it as unto the Lord. Right. And so that means that everything that I do from changing the oil to cutting the grass, if I do it as unto the Lord, it's going to glorify God and uh -huh. bring him, bring him worship. And I think that's when life gets mm -hmm. good. That's mm -hmm. the beginning of enjoying everyday life. It really is. I think that there is also understanding that if it's in your life, God has given you grace. Yeah to be able to handle this. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that, you know, I had ministry and family um, to balance and I knew that I had grace to do it. Yeah. And so knowing that it's like going to God and saying, okay, um, here's what's on my plate. How do I handle this at this time? Right. And then you look at the scripture and you find things like do at, if you're going to do it, do it as unto the Lord. Right. Um, then that scripture begins to kind of be magnified to say, okay, I have the grace to do whatever's on my plate right now. Uh -huh. And so I'm going to do it and I'm going to be happy about it. You know what I mean? Well, can you give me some practical things that somebody can do if they're mm -hmm. listening? Because it's one thing to say, well, okay, I think we've made a case already that we are supposed to enjoy our life. Yeah. yeah. We're supposed to enjoy the everyday life. Mm -hmm. And I think um, we can like mentally say, okay, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. But how do I live it out practically? Mm -hmm. What are some things that I can do to turn those routine things? Even if I accept the fact, okay, that, okay, taking care of my children is worship. Yeah. Doing the laundry is worship. It doesn't mean that like my heart's in it. Uh -huh. What would you say practically to help people actually start to enjoy it? I would say do like liven up your life. Uh -huh. um, I'm a person who I'm a creative person uh -huh. and I'm very moved by my surroundings. Uh -huh. And so um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm aware a lot of what I hear. Okay. I'm aware of what I see. I'm aware of what I smell. Uh -huh. Like I'm aware of what's going on. And so, for example, whether it was in my office or in my home, I like for my environment to be enjoyable. Okay. So if I have to clean up the kitchen, mm -hmm. I'm going to either put something on TV that I enjoy. Okay. I'm going to put on a podcast and listen to something that I enjoy. Uh -huh. I'm going to put on some oils uh -huh. and receive some frankincense. So you know what right. I mean? And yeah. just kind of build my spirit up. You know what I mean? I I'm going to just um, just make my environment so enjoyable mm -hmm. so that I don't have to just sit here and do dishes like by myself. I'm going to make it fun. Yeah. Add some spice, some flavor to it. 
Yeah, I think that's really good. Maybe you have another one. Um, you know, what comes to my mind is it for me, I, it's choice. Mm-hmm. I just choose not to go through my life. I believe life is a gift. Yep. Life is a gift and it should be valued. It should be honored. It should be esteemed. It should be enjoyed. Mm-hmm. And so I just choose to now look at the everyday frustrations and stress and the problems that I have to solve to look at them through a joy filled perspective. Yes. That's my choice. And I just believe that God has lays before his, he lays before us life and death, blessings and curses. Yes. And there is more power in our choice than what we know. Mm. And I know that it's not easy all the time, but if you were to ask me practically, what would I do? I would say, I'm just going to choose to look at it differently. So good. And I, and I, and also think, and I'll come back to you, like, what if God was able to develop us so much to where we walk in such a joy of the Lord and enjoy everyday life to when we look at like, let's say a traffic jam, Mm -hmm. we just looked at it at a different perspective. I mean, we're in the car and we see the red brake lights and instead of saying, Oh my God, here we go again. I got so much to do. What if we just made a choice to have a different perspective and say, well, thank God I got a, thank God I got a car. Thank God I'm safe in my car. Absolutely. Thank God I can turn on some good music and start worshiping God. Mm -hmm. To me, that is a choice. Mm -hmm. I mean, that might not be deep, but it's a choice to just say, Hey, well, I'm going through, um, what if, you know, I just, what if God could teach me how to enjoy laundry? Yeah. There's a lot of people who don't have clean water to be mm-hmm. able to wash. They have to go somewhere and, and maybe they don't have clothes that they need. And we have this top of the line washer and dryer. So instead of looking at it like, oh my God, it's just all I do is fold clothes and put away clothes. Thank you, Lord, that I got clothes and I got a family to enjoy these right. clothes with. And I can got the money to go out and buy the clothes when they grow out of these clothes. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think that that. That choice is a good perspective. It's the classic, this isn't what I have to do, but this is what I get to do. Yeah. Anything else practically come to you when it comes to enjoying everyday life? Yeah, you know, well, the, uh, when you talk about being having a choice, uh-huh. the Bible says that this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Right. That's something that I say probably 90% of the time that I like, you know, in most morning, days you say, yes. like when you first get up, before the first like, thing I say, when I, I am laying in the bed uh-huh. and I will say, especially on the days, if I'm struggling to get up, this uh-huh. is the day that the Lord has made. Okay. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh-huh. And that is one of my favorite scriptures to say first thing in the morning because of the key word, I will, I will, I will rejoice, yeah. meaning that I choose to rejoice. Yeah. I set myself it's not based upon how I feel. Mm-hmm. It's based upon my choice. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And so it's this a matter of your will, what yeah. you set yourself to do and the decision that you make. Yeah. Um, I um, when I was going through chemotherapy, it was one of the things that I focused on and intentionally in the middle of chemotherapy, I set myself to remember this principle when I was out of fighting cancer, you know? So right now I can look back and remember that um, life is too short, Yeah. you know? <laughs> life is too beautiful and life is such a gift. Yeah. I don't wanna waste one moment of my life being worried, yeah frustrated, yeah. not having joy. Because when I was in chemotherapy, it was just like, man, I had to fight for my life. I can't really spend my time with a lot of people because I can't get sick. My immune system was so low. I just wanted to go to my son's soccer games. I just wanted to go and um, to my, I wanted to go to the parent teacher conferences. Oh. I wanted to do homework with my wow. kids. I wanted to have the strength to do dishes. I, like I wanted to have the strength to get up and clean my house and to make breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That was perspective. Going through what you were going through change your perspective. Change my perspective. My hope is that people don't have to go through such hard times. Right. That they can hear stuff like this and choose their perspective even right. before the pain. You right. Know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And so you know that's just something that now I'm like, whoo. Yeah. Definitely, I remind myself. Okay, we're not going to stress out about that. You know, in one of our um, podcasts, we did a podcast. Um, y'all can check this out called "Stopping Suicide," and mm-hmm. I know that my best friend. Um, in ninth grade, took his life. Wow. And then my college roommate also took his life. And then you had a brother that took his life as well. Mm-hmm. So that's something very, um, very close to us. Yes. And I, short, I shared a story in that podcast about my battle with depression. Mm-hmm. And I didn't realize that I had never, I don't even know if I'd ever shared that before. I never heard you share it. Yeah, because yeah. it was about seven, eight years ago. But the reason that I never shared it before is because I didn't realize that it mm-hmm. was depression. 
until you kind of pointed it out. Yeah. Now you yourself, you went through 12 years of depression mm -hmm. and then you've been healed now for 20 years. So God Praise can the Lord. heal you no matter where you are. Um, but I never went to the doctor and I was never diagnosed depressed. Mm -hmm. But looking back, would you say I was depressed? Yeah, Why definitely. Was um, it was such a hard time in yeah. ministry for us because, again, like we were touching on earlier, God was calling you mm -hmm. to do something new, mm -hmm. something that you had never seen before mm -hmm. and something different. Mm -hmm. And you were um, beginning to just like make changes in our church mm -hmm. um, and people didn't like it. There was a lot of persecution, people rising up against you. They didn't agree agree with you well, it, it was the most hard thing that I've ever been through in my life it was the people that I had fought for mm -hmm. they were fighting me mm -hmm. the people that I had um, been there for I didn't feel like they were there for me yeah the people that I had stood with mm -hmm. I didn't feel like they were standing with me they were mm -hmm. actually standing against me and I didn't realize the effects of betrayal yeah I know what it's like well, I don't know exactly, but I, I have a, a, a sense, a hint now mm -hmm. of what it's like when a husband leaves his wife or a wife leaves her husband, that kind of betrayal or that kind of abandonment mm -hmm. or the kind of rejection that some people feel. Well, especially when you feel like you're not do you haven't done anything wrong. You're just being obedient to God. Yeah. Well, that was the thing about the changes that we went through. So for those of you all who are new to our program, we've been in ministry for 15 years Well, in ministry, 20 years, lead pastors for 15 years. And about seven or eight years ago, the Lord just led us to, I would call it improve mm -hmm. and get better. We wanted to be more diverse, to reach people of different ethnicities. Mm -hmm. We wanted to reach more unchurched people instead of just having church people go from church to church. We wanted to be more focused on missions. And really the first seven years of ministry, I loved everything about me too. Um, I loved the word. I loved it. But, but I knew that God was doing something new in humanity and yeah. we're seeing it now. And I knew that we couldn't do the new thing with old wine skins. Yeah. And so many times God will reveal it to men and women of God first. And uh, he began to reveal to me some things that we needed to do. Um, and I had to put my own personal things on the altar. And I think that's what a lot of people don't know. When you have a pastor and he starts leading the church, maybe in a new direction, it might not, he might not even know exactly where it's going. Mm -hmm. You know, we as lead pastors have to follow the fire by night and the cloud by day. Come on. And sometimes we can't explain everything that God is wanting to do. All we can say is, listen, um, you know, a tree by its fruit. Yeah. You've had good fruit with me. Trust the God in me enough to get mm -hmm. us where we want to go. Little did I know that many people don't have that revelation. Yeah. I had somebody who was really, really close to me, literally look at me and say, I don't like a live church. Meaning that they didn't want us to change at all. Yeah. I mean, like standing against me. Yeah. Had another person tell me, hey, if I would have known what this, where we were going to become as a church, I would have never have joined it. Wow. Well, thankfully, God is God picks a church for you because you probably mess it up. Mm. Um, had another person tell another person. I mean, these are real key people close yeah. to me. And they're not evil people. I'm, I'm getting to that. Yeah. Um, I had a real key person say this. Um, uh, uh, I didn't sign up for all this. Mm -hmm. Meaning that because I'm going with God, you don't understand it. That's why you need leadership. You yeah. don't see what the overseer sees. These were not bad people at all. Matter of fact, when I look back now, my heart is like so filled with love and forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Now, what I went through, it felt like rejection, abandonment, betrayal. I was being misunderstood. I was being attacked. But now, seven, eight years later, I'm looking back on it and says, well, maybe I could have done something better. Maybe I could have had more meetings. Maybe I could have been slower in unfolding the vision. Maybe I could have tried to help under people stand it, um, understand it more. Maybe I, uh, maybe I, I could have started the church later after I got the revelation. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think only heaven will know yeah. the part that I play. I think th I think you do feel comfort in mm -hmm. this and that you did the best that you could. That's all you can do. Like all you can do is that what you know to do and you continue to love people. You can cont continue to be obedient to God. Yeah. So even in the time where I knew that you were depressed, uh -huh. I saw that because I would, I know you, uh -huh. I would see you come home and just kind of be by yourself. Like you weren't your, this sparkle in your well, eye. I have a zeal for life. Mm -hmm. I've always had it since I was a kid. You can mm -hmm. see it in my son. I just enjoy people and I enjoy life. And uh, that was being stripped away from Absolutely. me. Absolutely. Uh -huh. um, what it, what it felt like was me going through the motions. Mm -hmm. I think, I don't know, you can say what it felt like to you. Mm -hmm. But for me, I remember not wanting to leave the house. Yep. I remember coming to my own church that I founded and didn't even like mm -hmm. it, didn't even want to be there. I remember I would have certain leaders 
over my house. Like you just have people come over the house and I just want to stay in the room. Now, I remember that yeah. because I didn't, I wasn't the one calling the meetings, okay? You would have the meeting at the house. We need to get together for fellowship, Tabitha. This is what we need to do. Okay, so, you know, I'm there. I'm, you know, I'm going to, whatever like you need me to do, I do it. So here we are. Yeah. We come home on Sunday. Uh -huh. Where's Ken? Uh -huh. My, I don't have a voice. I'm talking so much, like all of this stuff. He's in the bedroom. I go in the bedroom and check on him. You okay? And like, I get it. Like I didn't, you know, it, I, like I get it. But I remember those times. I was like, I need my husband I'll tell you back. How that was. Um, what people don't know about a pastor is that oh, for most, I can't speak for every pastor. So let's just say for me, mm -hmm. God gives you real discernment. Yeah. And I felt the spirit of Judas. And it's not about a person yeah. because forgive people. They don't know what they do. And matter of fact, the way I look at it now is Genesis 50, 20 is my portion. Mm -hmm. The things that you meant for my hurt, God is actually using now for my good to the saving, to of, the many saving lives. of many lives. And right now we're reaching more people. I just got the numbers for last year. I think we had over 6,000 people get saved in one Amen. year. Um, we're reaching people around the world. Just got to. Um, uh, invited to come on TV in Russia to translate all come of our on. messages into Russian. I mean, we're reaching millions of people around the world. And um, so it's not a, 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 but I just remember like, uh, what was I saying about, cause I got into it, where it, we're going. It, it was about you being at home when mm -hmm. we were, ha we would have those parties and fellowships mm -hmm. and oh, um, you'd be in the bedroom. Well, well this is what I was saying. It's, it, what, it, and, and that's when I say a spirit, that's what it is. Yeah. The spirit, I knew betrayal was, come, was my portion. Yeah. I knew that rejection and misunderstanding was my portion. And the thing about Jesus and Judas is Jesus knew who his Judas was, even when the disciples couldn't see it. Mm. He literally says, the person who puts their hand in the bowl, as I put my hand in there, that's going. And he, he did the exact thing. Judas put his hand right in there. Nobody saw it. Jesus knew. Mm -hmm. But Jesus still had to love him. Jesus couldn't kick him off the table wow. because Judas's assignment was to push him into destiny. And for those of you all who are watching and you have a Judas in your life, you can't hate on them. Um, sometimes you have to access the grace of God and allow them to push you into destiny. Yes. You can be wise, you can do things, but truthfully, that's just a part, not all the time, but some of our lives, mm -hmm. we're going to have to allow our pain to push us into purpose. Mm -hmm. And that's what it did. But it was a dark moment for mm. me because as a young leader, I just didn't understand it. Yeah. I've had the same pastor 20 years. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking for another pastor, you know, just like I'm not looking for another dad. Yeah. C.W. Clater is my dad and I'm going to take him when he's up and he's down, when he's perfect, when he's imperfect. Yes. I, I don't understand this new generation of, I, I call them like tumbleweeds. Mm -hmm. They're here for a couple of years then somewhere else for a couple of years and they don't know their spiritual family or spiritual lineage or where they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And I know that you can be a Christian without the church, but you can't be a healthy one. You need covering, you need mentorship, oh. you need spiritual fathering. You need to be a part of the and body. And I'm just, so my mentality and that's why one of the greatest things about you is loyalty. Mm. I mean, you're beautiful. You're intelligent. You preach with passion. That's stuff you were talking about. I mean, it's, it's just amazing to see what you do. But one of the qualities that I love most about you is you're fiercely loyal. Amen. And so because you're loyal, I'm loyal. I expect loyal people around me. Yeah. But some people haven't developed the fruit of faithfulness yet. And because of that, I took so many lashes and um, was hurt so, so bad. But thankfully didn't stay there. Yeah. And now I actually I'm so in love with my critics. I'm so in love with people. Even when people online, they say negative things. I like there's just something in my heart now like, oh, God, forgive me for they know not what they right. do. If they really knew me, they wouldn't be thinking those right. things like God for whatever religion they came out or whatever stream they've come from that has caused them to want to attack different parts of the body. God, forgive them. Mm -hmm. It's like I have this love in my heart for haters, naysayers, critics people who don't understand me. And so I actually now thank God for that season. But I say all of that just to say that there's somebody who's listening that has lost their zeal. Yeah. You know, there's a scripture in Matthew five, I believe 13. It says you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, mm. it's how can it be salty? Again? Right. It's good for nothing, but to be thrown under feet and be trampled on by man. And I believe that there are so many people that you are the salt of the earth. What mm. does salt do? It makes people thirsty. Mm. We are supposed to make unsafe people thirsty to drink from the living water. Come on. Um, salt brings flavor mm -hmm. where there's dullness and drab. We are the salt. Mm -hmm. We are the salt. We bring the flavor to a dying world that thinks that you need to be high and drunk to have fun. We bring the salt. But if the salt loses its saltiness, 
That's what happened to me in that season. Wow. I began to lose my saltiness, mm -hmm. my zeal, and you saw it. And that's why I just want to say thank you because you picked me up when I was down. Mm. And I know to God be all the glory because it was the work of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But he used you. Yeah. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but my wife is a boss. Mm -hmm. When I was, because we didn't know that it was depression. Right. We didn't know what was going on. You just knew that I lost my zeal a mm -hmm. little bit. That it was almost like looking in my eyes, the light wasn't on. Right. That fun loving, lighthearted Ken wasn't there any longer because ministry had stripped a little bit of my expectation. Mm -hmm. But when I was down, and this is why you got to be careful who you marry. It matters who you marry. You didn't kick me when I was down. Mm -hmm. You basically came and you prophesied over me and prayed for me and was my help meet. You helped me get back up. And before we even, our current executive pastor, Scott Maccabee, who's doing a great job, before him, you went into the office and you became the executive pastor. Mm -hmm. And you began to run staff meetings and you began to redo our bylaws and you began to put everything in order a time where I didn't even want to come into the office right. or I didn't even want to leave my house because I didn't even know the warfare that I was in for who I would become. You picked up the mantle and you said, we're not going to let that vision die. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say thank you for praying for me. Mm -hmm. Thank you my for pleasure. loving me. Thank you for caring for me. Thank you for being strong when I was weak. Yeah. And I got it now. Let's run. You know what I mean? And, and I think like, like and I want to say that for anyone watching where it could be a husband, um, a wife um, or, you know, sometimes even on your job, you know, maybe your pastor might you maybe you're an executive pastor or, you know, you're on staff at a church or wherever. And the person in leadership, maybe they're going through a hard time. Yeah. It's not time to leave. Yeah. It's time to, like, support them, yeah. hold up their arms so that they can, you know, sustain. And I just remember in that time where. Where I'm just like, yeah, of course, I will do whatever I need to do. And what I want to say is thank you for not just losing it. You yeah. know what I mean? I knew it was a hard time for you, but you still showed up at I church. Still showed up. You know what I mean? Yeah. You still were faithful to me. Yeah. You didn't cheat on me. You didn't go and find yeah, peace in. Yeah, yeah, you didn't become an alcoholic. Yeah. You didn't get into other job. I mean, with drugs or anything like that. Yeah. You know, um, you just didn't fall deeper than where you needed to go. Yeah. Um, so I just want to say thank you for yeah. at least holding on to to God and yeah. fighting through the moment. But isn't that what relationship is about? Like if you mm -hmm. get low and you go through cancer, mm -hmm. I'm not looking for. Uh, somebody who is cancer free to come and replace you. No, yeah. that's the time where I'm going to stand with you. Yeah. That's the time I'm going to pick you up. That's the time is till death do us part. Mm -hmm. I got down, you came and picked me back up. And I really believe second chair leaders need to, your pastor is not Superman. Mm -hmm. He has feelings. She has emotions. Right. They have a personal life and they're believing God just like you. Get behind them. Be a, a modern day Aaron and her. Yes. Because when you lift up their arms, Everybody that's around them wins in battle. And so thankfully, and man, I'm thankful. Mm. Thankfully, God has surrounded us now with integrable, faithful, loyal people. Absolutely. That are gifted, that are strong, that have the heart of the house, that are sons and daughters of the house. It is amazing what God is doing right now. As I look on our staff and our team, and our staff is over 30 people now, and it's just growing because God is giving us new territory just to see the pure-hearted people that Absolutely. God has kind of just put around us. It's just, I guess the word of the Lord is, hold on. Yeah. Don't allow yourself to get into this valley and mm -hmm. stay down there as if God has forsaken you. Because even though man might betray you and might not understand you, God is, he will never leave you or forsake you. And man, I just feel like I'm preaching right now, but I don't know. Enjoying everyday life. Anything else? Enjoying sweetheart? everyday at life. No, find a way to find joy. Yeah. Um, there's so many different ways, natural things that you can do, like throwing on music. You know what I used to do when I was going through, um, when I was fighting cancer? Yeah. Um, cause there was a moment where like I was bald, didn't have any hair. We looked in the mirror. I didn't even know myself, but I would just go into the bathroom and I would just start dancing mm -hmm. like my, like looking at myself in the mirror. And it was oh, so my. funny. And I would just laugh at myself oh, literally cause I look crazy, but I would dance. I'm talking old school. I would do the running man. <laughs> I'd pull out the typewriter, do the MC do hammer. The like the I would do writer. everything. <laughs> I mean, everything just to, and you didn't know it. No one knew it. Cause I looked like a fool, you know, like just, you know, a clown. Like, let's just let's use that word, a clown. But I was clowning around all the time because I had to deep in my heart, yeah. in my body, in my brain, anyone that could hear me, see me or listen, all of heaven, all of hell know that yeah. nothing's going to steal my joy. Yeah.
and create atmospheres of joy. I, lo I love to listen to jazz. Yeah. I love to listen to classical music. A lot of people don't know that. It just puts me at ease, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. Um, I was in an Uber the other night, and, um, and my, I said, it was quiet, completely quiet. I'm in the back of an Uber. And the sign says, you know, what music? How do you want your AC? Give me a five-star rating. And I was like, hey, can you play some music? And so he grabs a chord and gives it back to me. I was like, no, 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 you play it. I don't want to play it. You know, I know I, I ain't got nothing but Travis Green and some gospel and worship and stuff on my phone. So sure enough, I stick it in because he's like, no, you you play it. And, and Travis Green comes on. And I'm like, okay, okay. Uh, and he seemed like a Middle Eastern guy, and I uh -huh. didn't want to hit him real fast. So I put over, I had this jazz, uh -huh. like, collection mm -hmm. and I played jazz music and I mean he got so into this jazz music I'm talking about we're sitting there listening to sax listen to trumpets play we'll listen to the guitar man that thing is jamming out coming down Sand Lake Road he looks he gets his phone he says man can you download for me mm. all that is and I mean we just had this beautiful conversation and I guess that's a part of enjoying everyday life mm -hmm. talk to people come on get into their life enjoy good food enjoy good music see what God's gonna do I love it hey we're out of time for today but man we've enjoyed being with you guys I want to pray in Jesus name for you very quickly that you enjoy everyday life and that you also get your zeal back. I know that there is somebody who is watching and listening to this, that um, life has dealt you a hand. There's been some betrayal, misunderstanding and ridicule. And I want to pray that the things that people have done to you cannot stop the promotion of God. Forgive them for they know not what they do. And so I want to pray in Jesus name that God resuscitates you again spiritually and emotionally and he gives you a zeal that you are not just salt but you are salt that has not lost its saltiness that you will be everything that god's called you to be there's no devil in hell that can stop the call of god that is on your life your best days are still out in front of you in jesus name hey if you enjoyed today's podcast please make sure you subscribe right away if you enjoy make sure you write a review also if you got questions or comments hit the email that's in our show notes. We would love to hear from you because we love doing life with you. We pray that these programs are bringing you great value to your life, marriage, leadership, ministry, financial, whatever it happens to be. And we hope to see you soon. Of course, we release a new show every Tuesday and Thursday. So make sure you check us out at whichever day is coming your way next. We love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Peace. Peace.